serve a risen Savior. Come on and let's give God a hand praise in this house. Death could not hold him in the grave. But he, because of his resurrection, has given us the victory. And aren't you glad you have the victory this morning? Just tell somebody, because he got up, I have the victory. Amen. Because he got up, we have the victory. Father, we thank you this morning, and we praise you. We thank you for giving us hope because of your resurrection. And God, we ask even now that your anointing would fall afresh on us. Breathe upon us in a mighty way. Let your word come forth with power and with clarity. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray that miracles would happen here today. Through your preacher word. In the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to hear a word from you. And Father, we pray that your word will come forth. With the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you now. The blood of Jesus is against you. And we claim the victory by faith. And it is so in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. Oh, come on. This is Resurrection Sunday. If you can't get happy no other time, this is the time we come and we are excited. We celebrate the fact that we serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name of the Lord. St. Matthew, the 28th chapter is where we will go this morning. It is found in your bulletins. You can also read along with us in your bulletins. Those of you who may or may not have your Bibles, St. Matthew 28. Oh, Sweet wonder, oh, sweet wonder, Jesus, the Son of God, oh, sweet, sweet wonder, oh, Sweet wonder, Jesus, the, the Son of, of God. Can I sing it one more time? Oh, sweet wonder. Oh. Sweet wonder, Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder, Jesus. The, the Son of, of God. Woo. Glory to God. St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. How I love him. Anybody love him this morning? Oh, how I love him. Jesus. The Son of God. Oh, 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 oh. 
how I love him. Oh, how I love him. Jesus, the son of, of God. Matthew 28, let's read together. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake. They got scared and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, don't get scared, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Sixth verse in our last verse says, he is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. I want to preach from you from this subject this morning. Satan's plans were canceled. Jesus got up. Pete goes over to me. Satan's plans were canceled. Jesus got up. Now come on and clap your hands and praise the Lord as you take your seats. Jesus got up. Satan's plans were canceled. Jesus got up. Fact of the matter is, Satan had a plan to destroy Jesus even from the very beginning. Fact is that he was trying to destroy the mission of Jesus, trying to destroy his cause. He came to seek and to save them which were lost. Salvation was the ultimate gift to humanity from the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. If Jesus hadn't died and rose again, we would still be lost in a miserable world of sin and degradation. We, couldn't, we would not have the right to salvation and neither have the right to grace. But thanks be to God for sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sin, therefore giving us access to grace. The cross represents our hope. The cross represents our salvation. The cross represents our healing cross represents our access to grace. I thought about it that we don't uh, have a cross and when you see the cross in the Christian or the Protestant religion or the Protestant denominations, we don't have a dead person on the cross. When you go to other uh, places of other origins, the Catholic Church, they still have the crucifix with Jesus nailed to the cross. But we don't serve that kind of Jesus because he is a risen Savior. He's not a dead Jew on the cross, but he is a risen Savior. So when you see the cross that we bear, we don't have a person on the cross, but he is a risen Savior. Look at Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. For it says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ. This is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus and reminding them that uh, they were Gentiles uh, outside of the realm of the saints. 
But he tells them that at the time you were without Christ, you were being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. He calls them and tells them that you were strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That should make us rejoice because if it had not been for blood, we still would be strangers. Uh, we would still be aliens. But thank God for the blood. We have access through the blood. The blood drew us in and now we are partakers of grace. And now we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So today we celebrate the resurrection but we celebrate the fact that we can be saved and that we can be free from the bondage of sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan had a plan to destroy Jesus. The plan to destroy him didn't begin at Calvary. But I might I suggest to you this morning that this plan had been set in motion even when Jesus was a child. Walk back with me a while, St. Matthew Second chapter, the 13th verse. For it reads, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. The plan of Satan was to destroy Jesus as a child. Because if he could kill Jesus as a child, he certainly wouldn't be able to save humanity. This text gives us two principles in which we can glean. First, the devil doesn't know everything. Sometimes we give the devil too much credit. The devil is not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. He is not omniscient. He doesn't have all power. The fact is the devil doesn't know everything. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, oh, the devil thought he could destroy Jesus by using Herod to destroy him. Oh, but God had already averted Satan's plan by speaking to Joseph in a dream. Oh, secondly, you can't die until you have done what God has called you to do. You can't die when you have purpose and destiny to be fulfilled. That's good news today because the enemy has had it out for some of you. The devil is after you. He's not after you because you look good. He's not after you because you got so much money. Certainly because of that, because most of us don't have that much money. He's not after you because you come from a good family. He's after you because uh, you have purpose and destiny in your life. And if he can destroy you now, he can avert your destiny. He can avert the plans that God has for you in your life. Well, the, the good news is that God had averted Satan's plans for Jesus. So when Jesus says in St. John 19.30, it is finished, what Jesus was really saying is that his work was finished. He had completed his task and it was over. The Greek word uh, there about it is finished, the phrase really means paid in full. That's what it is finished really means. It really means that Jesus paid uh, the blood. Uh, it did not half do it. It did not partially do it. But it was complete and paid in full. Therefore, you don't need any, but you know, it's not like, you know, going to the store and putting stuff on layaway. It's not putting it on credit. But it is paid. You got a receipt to show that it's paid in full. That's what Jesus was really saying. It is finished. And I came to tell somebody, you can't die until it is finished. Grab a neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, you can't die until it is finished. 
Now, I don't know what your it is. I don't know what God has called you to do, but you better get busy doing it. Uh, but I, I don't care what the devil tries to do. I don't care what the devil tries to put on your life. I don't care what the devil tries to make you believe. You can't go anywhere until God has the final say. God has called you, so you must fulfill what God has called you to do. We move on and we see where Satan tries to destroy Jesus. He could destroy him as a child, and now Satan comes to try and tempt Jesus. Here in St. Matthew, the fourth chapter, the Bible says that Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. And the Bible says that the tempter came to him. The Bible says that the tempter came to him. Jesus was in the wilderness by himself fasting and praying, and the devil showed up. The devil thought he was picking the right time as it seemed as if Jesus was at a very vulnerable state. He was hungry and no doubt weak. He thought he could come in and try to tempt Jesus. This is a good time. Let me get him while he's down. Can I tell you this? The enemy is strategic. And he will try to come at you when you are most vulnerable. When you are weak. When you are tired. And I thought about you, Mother Price, the other week when she had a fire. We were out there uh, at the fire. And uh, while we were waiting for the city to send out people to board up her home, a fraud man came. Man who was coming, they called him a fire chaser. Had Mother Price to sign on the line that he was going to do the work. Hadn't been sent by nobody at her most vulnerable state. The enemy came and tried to get her to sign something. Uh, but y'all know Mother Price. She ain't no punk. She walked up to the truck and told the man, give me the papers. And tore it up right in front of him and gave it back to him. At your most vulnerable state, here come the devil. Here comes the enemy trying to get you off your square. Ah, oh, when you are weak, he'll try to get you to fall back. Listen to what the tempter says to Jesus. If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus answers him with the word of God that says man shall not live by bread alone. The devil doesn't stop with that. He tells Jesus to cast himself off the temple. And the worst lie yet, the devil tells, is when he takes him to the mountain, shows him the kingdom of the world, and says that if Jesus would fall down and worship him, then he would give him everything. Now how the devil, how dumb the devil can be, how, how could he give something to Jesus that already belonged to him? The kingdom was already his. But the enemy was trying to destroy uh, by making the enemy relinquish uh, power or make Jesus relinquish his power. Again, the devil thought he was getting Jesus at the right time. However, what the devil didn't realize is that after a good fast, you have more power. After you done been with God, uh, you got more power. You got more power to resist the devil. The devil's worst headache is to come into contact with the fasting and praying saint. He didn't know that though. Thought he was getting them at a weak time. But didn't realize it was his most powerful time because he had been with the Father. The devil thought Jesus was going to give in to these temptations. Therefore, destroying the plan of salvation. And throughout the ministry of Jesus, he would perform miracles in the lives of individuals and then tell them not to tell anyone. His time had not come yet. One of the reasons he would say is that his time had not come. And however, after agonizing in the garden of Gethsemane, over wanting the cup to pass from him. In other words, the human side of Jesus struggled with having to die. Struggled with having to take on the weight of sins for humanity but Jesus says nevertheless not my will but thy will be done although Jesus agonized within himself he knew what he had to do 
So he allowed himself to be captured and arrested in the garden. Notice I said he allowed himself. They couldn't have taken him unless he allowed it. Do you know that Jesus could have called down a legion of angels? He could have, he could have done anything. He was God in the flesh. He did not have to allow them to arrest him. But to Peter says he became obedient to death. Even the death of the cross. Philippians 2.8 says that. That he became obedient to death. Brothers and sisters, with all power at his disposal, Jesus was in total command. He was not a victim of circumstance. But he managed circumstances for the fulfillment of prophecy. St. John 10, 17, 18 already told us, Therefore doth my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. And if I lay it down, I have the power to take it back up again. The reality is Jesus humbled himself to death. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. Nobody had the power to take his life. Nobody had the power to take it from him except he relinquished it and allowed them to take it from him. The Bible says that he was led from judgment hall to judgment hall. As they were trying to convict Jesus. But the Bible says that Jesus sat silently until he was commanded to speak. Pilate asked him, art thou a king then? Jesus answered, thou sayest that I am a king. And then Jesus gives to his the reason why he came. The Bible says that Jesus said, to Pilate, to this end was I born. And for this cause I came into the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus testifies of himself of why he came. He came to bear witness of the truth. He says whom the Son set free is free indeed. But after all of this they still said crucify him. And I'm sure Satan was standing on the sidelines, happy and excited. He thought he was finally winning. Can't you see Satan standing on the side along with his demons and his imps, laughing and mocking Jesus, thinking they had won the battle, thinking they had uh, done what they had come to do, thought their plan was going just the way they thought it was going to go. They were standing on the side looking and laughing and mocking Jesus. I'm sure uh, was especially excited to see them whipping Jesus. They were especially excited as they spat upon Jesus. They were excited because they were defaming the character of Jesus. The enemy thought he was winning. Can't you see him laughing and grinning as they led Jesus down the street carrying a 300 pound cross on his shoulders. The enemy thought he was winning when they got to Golgotha, the place of the skull. But they made one mistake. The Bible says that they lifted up the cross. And as they nailed his hands, they nailed his feet. They put a crown of thorns on his head, but they made a mistake because they lifted up the cross. They didn't realize that Jesus had already said in St. John 12, 32, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. However, they lifted up his body upon the cross. Satan thought his plan was being carried out without reservation. And the enemy really thought he had won when Jesus lifted up his voice and cried out his last words before he gave up the ghost. The devil thought he had won because Jesus says, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he laid his head in the locks of his shoulders and the Bible says he gave up the ghost. And the devil really thought he had won because Jesus 
that died. Can't you see him shouting and excited because the plan was going on without reservation. He thought he had won because Jesus had died. The devil thought it was over. The enemy thought the plan to rescue men and women from the bondage of sin was over. The enemy thought that healing was over. The devil thought that salvation was over. The devil thought that you and me would still be lost in a miserable world of sin. That we would still have to suffer through sin. But oh my brothers and my sisters aren't you glad the story doesn't stop at the cross uh, tell somebody neighbor uh, the story doesn't stop at the cross clap your hands and praise the Lord uh, tell somebody else on the other side of you neighbor the story doesn't end at the cross uh, uh, the story doesn't end at the cross uh, Bible says they buried Jesus in a borrowed tomb that was owned by Joseph of Arimathea. Satan really thought he had won. Not only was Jesus dead, but now they are burying Jesus. And all of you know that they are no coming back from the grave. When you lower your loved one in the grave, you're saying your last goodbyes. You're crying your tears and saying that it's over. Death is over. It's over. There's no coming back. But I'm so glad that the story doesn't stop at the grave. Not only does the story not begin stop at the cross, but the story doesn't stop at the grave. Uh, the Bible says uh, in 1 Peter 3 19 uh, that while Jesus was in the grave uh, he preached to the spirits uh, that were in prison uh, and he tells them lift up your heads uh, O ye gates uh, and be ye lifted up uh, ye everlasting doors uh, and the king uh, of glory uh, shall come in uh, who is uh, the king of glory uh, the Lord uh, strong and mighty uh, the Lord uh, mighty in battle uh, tell your neighbor neighbor uh, lift up your hand uh, because the king of glory uh, has come in the king of glory has just shown up lift up your head say yeah yeah clap your hands and tell the lord yeah can i preach it the way i feel it this morning uh the bible says now now we come to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. The Bible says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. You got to understand, they, Mary and Mary Magdalene, were on their way to the tomb. And they were asking amongst themselves, who is going to roll the stone away? They realized they were too weak to roll the stone away. They wanted to get in to see Jesus but the Bible says and behold there was a great earthquake. God knew that they couldn't roll the stone away but God sent an earthquake and it great shook and the Bible says for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it and the Bible says and his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake in other words the men that were guarding the tomb the soldiers that wanted to keep anybody from coming to the tomb the Bible says they shook and became as dead men God knocked them down and they became as dead men and the angel answered and said unto the women don't be scared 
fear not ye for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified but he is not here for he is risen as he said come see the place where the Lord lay the plan was averted because Jesus got up the plan of salvation did not end at the cross the plan of salvation did not end at the grave but I'm so glad that early Sunday morning early Sunday morning death had to get back death had to take a back seat and Jesus got up and he declared I've got all power in heaven and in earth is in my hand I got the keys to death hell and the grave I've got all all power because I am he who sent me say yeah and because I've got Jesus on my side no matter what the devil throws in my way I can get up grab hands with somebody and tell your neighbor said neighbor no matter what the devil throws in your way but you can get up you can get up you can rise from the ashes of your situation you can rise from the ashes of sin and shame you can rise from the death hell and God gives the victory to those who love God for Paul said in 1 Corinthians the 5th 15th chapter and the 57th verse but thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he got up I can get up because he shook off death I can get up grab somebody by their hands and say neighbor get up get up you've been down for too long you've been down for too long the enemy had his plan for your life the enemy wanted to destroy you the enemy wanted to defeat you but he didn't know that I had Jesus on my side and every time the devil thought he had me I got back up every time he knocked me down and thought it was over I got back up every time every time I said every time he counted me out I got back up Oh Lord, I hate to bother you one more time, but grab a neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, get up. Oh, come here, Elder William. Come here, Elder Daniels. Come here, Elder Rizzo. You stand on the side. You are the referee. This is Satan. I'm sorry, you're going to be Satan today. I'm Jesus. Now, round one began as a child. Hit at me. Jesus was a child. But he got up. Because his father had, earthly father Joseph, had him to flee from Egypt, from, 
from where he was to go to Egypt. Round two comes. Jesus and the devil are fighting again. Satan tells Jesus to throw yourself over. Tempt Jesus. Knock at me. Third round comes. You really think he had him now. Now give me your best shot. You see the ref counting? He couldn't. But, but, but the reality is, he got to three and got up. And can't you see the devil upset? Can't you see the devil mad? Because his plan didn't work. I came to preach to somebody this morning. The devil took his best shot. The devil knocked you out. The devil knocked you down for the count. But oh, I'm so glad that I've got the victory through Jesus Christ who always causes us uh, to triumph. Uh, so every time the devil thought he had me, I got away. Every time he thought he had me, I snuck out uh, because he always uh, provides a way to escape uh, for his people. He always uh, causes us uh, to have the victory. Clap your hands and praise the Lord always the plan of Satan was cancelled because what Jesus got up songwriter picked it up and said I serve a risen savior He's in this world today. I know that he is living. No matter what men may say. I hear his voice of mercy. And I hear his voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Jesus got up. Everybody standing on your feet. And because he got up. You can get up. I don't care what is trying to hold you down. Drugs, alcohol, weed, promiscuity. How about No matter what, you are being held bondage by. He got up so we could get up. He got up so we would have the victory he got up so that we may have life John 10 10 says that I come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly Jesus came that you might have abundant life he doesn't want you just to live it's one thing just to exist a lot of people out today are walking and they're existing but they're not living. May I suggest to you this morning that the only way that you can really live is if you know Jesus. You think you're living now. Just wait until you come into contact with the Savior. Can anybody testify this morning that Jesus made a difference in your life? Woo, glory to God. He made a difference in my life. No, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But we're striving. That's not an excuse. Some people say, well, I ain't, I ain't going to church because ain't nobody perfect. They hypocrites. You keep going to the work every day. And you know they lying to you. fact is that the church is made up of imperfect people who are striving to make it into the kingdom. 
We don't have it all together. So, But we come to church to get it together. We come to church so we can get it together. You say, well, you know, I can stay at home and stream y'all. I can look on TV and I can send my tithe because that's all they want anyway is tithe. That's all they want. Preachers just want money. They ain't taking all the money. And I told you all the other Sunday, we can't be taking all the money and the light's still on here. I mean, the bank ain't came to seize the property. The reality is that the church is where you can get right. You can get it together. You keep striving. You keep making progress. And no, you are not where maybe you want to be, but you show not what you used to be. And aren't you glad you're not what you used to be? I mean, you used to cuss at a dime of a hat. I mean, you used to get mad, angry, and cuss them out. House told us the other night she just used to cuss. I mean, just. You just cuss folk and fight. Thank you, Mother Price. She said she was a fighter. Get mad and fight and cuss. Some of y'all wasn't fighting and cussers too. And uh, now you might not have fight and cuss, but you did some other stuff that we're not going to name today. We'll leave you alone. Thank you. It's all under the blood. There may be someone here today who says, I want the abundance of life. The enemy has had his foot on me. The enemy has had his foot on me. And I seemingly can't get up. Every time I try to make progress, I feel like a foot is on top of me and I can't muster up the strength to get up. I want to go forward. I want to be better. I want to, but I just seemingly have a hold and I can't get up. Well, here's the one of the problems. You're trying to get up yourself and you don't have the strength to get your own self up. You don't have the power within yourself to get your own self up. Because if you could get your own self up, you would need him. And you're trying to do it of yourself and you keep failing. But may I introduce you to the one that gives us the strength to get up. It gives us the courage and the power and the tenacity to get up. You feel like you can't. I can't. But, Paul tells me this. I can do all things. The problem with you, you're trying to do it without Christ. And you keep coming up empty. But I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. I want to pray for you today. If you have enough courage to come to this altar. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. You feel the Lord tugging at your heart. Come. I mean you join in the church. We just want to pray with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're going to give you a few moments. I didn't preach long. But come on, my brother. Thank you. I see you coming. I see you coming. My sister, I see you. Come on. Come on. Let this young lady through. This young man, come on, my brother. Come on. Let's give God praise for these that are coming today. Come on. Come on, my brother. Come on. I see you, my brother, my sister. God bless you. I see you coming. I see you. Come from wherever you are. Don't let anybody sitting on your road stop you from coming. I would go, but I would go, but I got so many folk on my road. 
But come on. Thank you, my sister. I see you. Come on. Come on. That's it. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. I see you, my brother. I see you. I see you. We're not putting no hope. We just want to pray with you today. I want to touch and agree with you. I want to pray God's blessings upon your life. I want you to be free. We want you to be free. And you can be free today. I don't care what situation you are being bound by. You may be thinking that you can get away in. You may be thinking that you can somehow skirt by. But God has a plan for your life. God wants you to be free. God wants you to be free from bondage and from yokes. Jesus says it like this. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. We want to pray with you today. Pray God's blessings on your life and pray that you would surrender and pray that you relinquish your power and say, God, have your way in me. So we're going to ask these preachers and missionaries to find somebody just to touch them on their shoulder. We didn't come to scare you today. We just want to pray with you. Believe God for you. I don't want anybody to go untouched. I, Sister Michelle, I need you. Sister Michelle, come. I don't want, thank you. I don't want anybody to come untouched. Thank you, I see you coming. Let me have some brothers. Brother Devon, Brother Cedric, come on. Let me have the, I don't want anybody to go untouched today. We've got some brothers on this side here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. And before I pray, let me ask you this. Did anyone come to be saved? Did you come to be saved? Our brother here confessed that he wants to be saved today. I said he said he wants to be saved. I said he wants to be saved. Nobody put a gun to his head. Nobody told him. He came up on his own. Last time I saw him, he was getting prepped for surgery. He had a tremendous, tremendous heart surgery, was it? What was it? Knee, leg, a bypass. And it was a very, very tedious surgery. And uh, it could have went either way. But God, we had prayer with him right before he went into surgery. And God preserved his life. He preserved you for this day because you made it up in your mind to give your life to Jesus. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, my brother. Lift your hands. Close your eyes as we pray for you. And then we're going to pray for the rest of you. Father, I thank you for this young man that has come and desired to follow after you. God, I know that it may be difficult for him, but I pray that you give him the strength to persevere, the tenacity to keep moving forward in the name of Jesus. Pray, God, that you help him to surrender everything unto you. Hallelujah. I pray that you help him, God. God, he can't make it unless you help him. And so, Lord, I pray you help him today in the name of Jesus. 
So, young brother, I want you to repeat these words after me. Close your eyes. I want you to say, Father, I come to you today and I acknowledge that I've done wrong. I've committed sin. But God, I come asking for your forgiveness. I ask that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness and that you help me live a saved life. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died, but on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hand. And Lord, I thank you for saving me. Lord, I thank you for saving me. Now, this is what I want you to do, my brother. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to clap your hands. And I want you to tell the Lord, thank you for saving you. Now, let's help him. Let's praise God with him. Thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. 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 Just like that. Just like that. Woo. Just like that. We're going to pair you with this elder here, Elder Daniels. He's going to help you. He's going to call you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to walk with you. You got questions. He's going to be there for you. He is with our outreach, one of our outreach ministries. He's going to be there. I want you all to exchange numbers. He's going to call you, pray with you, and encourage you. Because one thing I've learned is that you can't live it just by yourself. You need some help. You need some help. So I want to pray for those of you who are this on this altar today. Amen. Amen. Make sure everyone is touched. Find somebody. Find somebody. Find somebody. Find somebody to lay your hands on as we pray. Father. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Father, you see these that are on this altar today. You see their struggles. You see their hurts. My, 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 my. You see their disappointments in life. And Father, I touch and we lay hands on them today as a sign of contact. God, they need your help. Mm -hmm. Shh. they need your help <laughs> they need your help today and so father I pray that you bind the forces of the enemy off of their minds he come to the oak shutter Satan, I serve you notice today to take your hands off of their minds in the name of Jesus. I pray for peace in their minds. Peace in their minds. Peace in their minds. In the name of Jesus. I pray for peace today. The peace of God that passes all understanding. I pray that you encourage them, God pray that you touch them. I pray that you strengthen them. I pray that God you give them a mind to surrender their lives to you. God I pray for your protection. That you cover them with your blood. That you keep them. That you help them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God do something incredible in their lives. Show your hand oh God. In the name of Jesus. Show your hand, God. Show your hand. In the name of Jesus. Rebuke the hand of the enemy. Rebuke the hand of the enemy. We rebuke the hand of the enemy. We rebuke the hand of the enemy. And we claim victory in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. 
Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. You can be free. Let me do, I'm going to give you some encouragement and I'm finished. If you really want to make it, you got to keep coming. You got to keep pressing. You got to keep moving forward. Shanadi Oshata. You got to keep moving forward. Don't look back. You hear what I say? Don't look back. Because you can't drive forward looking back. You can't do this and drive and think you're going to hit and keep going straight. You're going to hit something after a while. But Paul says it like this. Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. We want to pray for you. You be encouraged. Go with God. Go with God. Oh, bless his name. And watch God do something incredible for your life. I want you you all to hug these on this altar and tell them they can make it. Amen. You all at your feet, at your seat. Stand up and hug somebody and tell them you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, that's right, that's right. Hug somebody and tell them, Corner, you can make it. You can make it. Yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Time, do that, do that. Yes, to your will, Lord. Yes, to your way. Oh, 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 yes, Lord. We will always. Hallelujah. What I want to ask you to do is, I know you're seated. But I want us to stand on our feet. And I want us to give our resurrected Savior a praise unto God. I want you to lift your voice, clap your hands. I know it may matter. I, I see, preacher, I'm not loud. Let me walk up to you and give you a million dollars and see what you're going to do. And some of y'all, I'm preaching, I'm just not loud. But some of y'all were so happy to see the Bulls make it to the playoffs. Y'all were hollering and screaming. and That's right. And don't, mean, don't, mean, don't, let, don't let me go to the Cubs. I mean, Elder Bradley, you know, was really loud. But on the count of three, I want us to give God a praise with our hands. I want us to close your eyes and I want you to thank God that he got up. Can we do that? On the count of three, we're just going to clap our hands and praise God. For the next 30 seconds, we're just going to let this house be filled with praise unto our God who allowed his son to come down to 40 and two generations to get up for our sins. All right? One, two, Three, come on and let's give God praise. Woo! Ha! Glory to God. Hallelujah! 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 We serve a resurrected Savior. Hallelujah! Woo! 
Hey, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. Oh, come on and clap your hands and pray the Lord in this house. Oh, press the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Woo! Oh, if this don't make you happy, nothing will. Woo! But I once was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, because grace and his mercy found me in time. Woo! Can you all, I know, can you all just excuse some of us just for, just for a couple seconds? We just, we just want to give God a little praise. Is that all right? Come on and let's give God the praise in here. Everybody and praise the Lord in his place. Praise God for a risen Savior. Praise God for a risen Savior. Praise God for a risen Savior. 
Glory to God. Hi, y'all, y'all. in here. You better pray the victory is in the praise. I got something to be shouting about. Woo, I got something to shout about. I don't know about you, but I've got something to shout about. Woo, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things he's done, 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 to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. For the things he has done. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name. 